Alright, let's check out some fittings. I guess that's how everything starts in EVE anyway. You look at ships and then you check out their fittings and then you try to figure out why are they fit the way they are. So first of all, just go through those fittings and tell me what do you think about them and tell me all the questions you might have. Um, I thought there was usually about four races of there is, yeah, there every is. Ship, uh, the pilgrim easier. is somewhat uh, useless for our need, at least. At least at the scale at our fleets, usually. We usually have so much DPS that if the enemy is self repping in a sub capital, it does not matter. Hey, Nova, as far as roles of ships, uh, would it be safe to say the Falcons are for jamming, the rapiers are for webbing, and the Arazus are for warp disruption? Yep, that's pretty much it. Arazus also have the secondary thing that they have a very long ram, which is very useful against smart, against smart bombing battleships or other situation where you need a long scram. They're also like really good hard tackle on stuff. And they can also have um, dams. And dams on an Arazu is like a guaranteed jam. If you have two or three range dams from an Arazu on anything, it's almost like a guaranteed jam, at least if no one is sitting on top of the enemy. Nice. But we usually always have a bunch of dams in our bombers and even unbonused, if you have 50 of them and you spread them across the enemy fleet, even if the bombers don't know what they're doing and who to put the damp on, if they just spread them, it's very powerful. Like half of the grid is going to be jammed without any jams being used and with a faster lock speed of a bomber. So let's go through the fittings really quick. The why they are fit the way they are fit. The high set high slots for us don't really matter because we don't need the recons for DPS at all. And it's more of a utility thing and it's more of a like fit whatever you want and whatever you think could be useful in a fleet. If you can for example uh, fit a covered up Sino and you have the skill anyway. These things have a bonus for using the fuel and it's very useful sometimes to just have one there just a, as a secondary Sino, for example. The remote reps, they're often offline. If you have remote reps there, they're often offline in the fittings because you don't always need them and you only online them like when you're in deep enemy territory and some bombers got really damaged and you want to wrap them up or some recons, you want to like armor wrap them on a safe spot after a fight to get ready for the next fight. So the MWD on the Falcon is uh, pretty much needed. Some some Falcon pilots also use an afterburner or no prop mod at all. But the MWD makes it so you can actually choose your range towards the target. And what's the range you want to have on targets in a Falcon? Less than 30? <laughs> well, what's your... Guys, just type in your optimal jamming range. The maximum optimal jamming range in Fleet Chat right now. If you look at the range. Whoa. Yeah, I was about to ask. 51? Right. Presume all these ECM. Yeah. Some stuff, yeah. You would always want to be on the edge of that. And what Willenbrook has is like 50. He has perfect skills, I assume. And that's the range you want to be as a Falcon pilot. You don't want to be closer, there's no need for you to get closer. Maybe like within 40, so if some enemy is like really on the other side of, of the enemies, that you even have a chance of jamming him. But you really want to be on the edge. The plates in a lot of those fittings are so you have some buffer so you can stay for some time on grid, but you really have to get experienced and know how much heat you can take and how much damage DPS you can take away with jamming certain ships on grid to be able to stay a little bit longer. But that little buffer with the 1600 plate saved a lot of Falcons because Falcons don't have a lot of um, a lot of uh, tank at all. And having more jams is making it way more useful. There's also a shield fit I mean, if you have like 10 Falcons in a fleet, those shield Falcons are maybe a bit more economic with fuel consumption and everything. 
So Nova, when a falcon's right at the edge of the range, are they, they're not aligned and in, in, they're moving, but they're always trying to stay within range of targets versus no. bombers that no, are No, no, you just move in an approximate range and then you align. Okay. Like the, 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 like the go-to move in any engagement should always be uh, be aligned. That should always be the go-to move for recons, except if you need to get closer to our target or further away. Or if you need to position yourself in a rapier, for example, if two enemies are moving in opposite directions from each other, then you, and they're like ahead of you, like, I don't know, 30, 30 clicks or something, then you just move between them and you have a weapon one direction, a weapon the other direction, and you kind of keep them there. I'll normally um, kind of pick two different Celestials that are opposite ends of the system and then I'll kind of move back and forth between those. Yeah, yeah, that's how you should do it. Yeah. Except, I mean, in a recon you have the buffer, you have the luxury, and if you're that's confident right. enough to move yourself around with just prop mod on and uh, if you know it's safe at that moment on grid for you to move around without being aligned, then it's fine. I mean, you have some buffer. You can, like today I got shot in my rapier again by uh, by three fighters of uh, Thanatos or something. What kind of damage did that do to you? Uh, not as much as you would expect. I think it was due to the fact that I was webbing two of those and then, you know, they have to sort of keep up with you. And I was MWDing away like a motherfucker. But I was aligned. So even if they would have, like, taken away all of my shield or most of it, I would have just warped off. Yeah. We had two Falcons in last night's fleet that died when a bunch of jackdaws landed on us, and I, they just weren't aligned, I think. I think that's often the case that people are not aligned and don't underestimate those plates. They make you really, they make you churn like a truck. Also there is a skill that makes you align faster, the evasive maneuvering skill. You should have that on five anyway because it's a core skill. And there is a skill in the armor section here that, that is armor layering. Basically, basically every plate you put in your ship is making your ship turn slower, and that um, skill is making that effect smaller. So that should also be on five at some point at least. So you don't always turn like a truck. And nomad uh, implants as well, right? Active. <laughs> you can pick out any implants you want. Generally. Use the fits you feel comfortable with and on your own risk. But know what those fittings are for. If you, for example, are a very new bro Falcon pilot, you want to maybe use one sensor booster that already takes one jam away and one headache away, where to put that jam. And then if you want to make it really easy, use four multi-specs or like all multi-specs, the rest. And then you never have to think about where to put those jams. All right, let's finish up the shield versus um, versus armor discussion. On the Arazu, for example, with armor, you have a huge variety of things. You can put like this. Um, this is the, the fast lock gate camp fitting. You can put a bunch of sensor boosters in there, and then you just lock up targets really fast. You can lock up, like, active. you have two warp disruptors and you can have another target scrammed at the same time and there's also shield fitting which is going to enable you to burn after targets and if there is already one ra rapier web for example on a target or two then you can establish a fast scram on the target which sometimes is important sometimes it isn't but the shield fitting goes really fast and you should, if you fly shield, use it, use it, be a tackle, go after targets, make sure that people get kills, don't let the enemy burn out of your point range. I mean, there are situations where you should be very aggressive when, you know, we own the grid, when we have five falcons and it's only ten enemies, 
then we're then it's almost guaranteed that we're gonna wreck them, right? So then be aggressive, tackle as many things as you can That's and right. the most valuable things and make sure that you know your other recon pilots and maybe coordinate with them. But we're gonna come to that later, the coordination and like talking about stuff. There's a bunch of tricks you can do with, and also the rapiers, the shield rapiers, they have the same thing. Like you can fit all the useful stuff in the mid slots if you are armor. And it's very great for gate camps and generally like one sensor booster, a target painter, webs. Very cool to have all of these in one ship. And also the, the standard shield fit. It's just, I use that okay. most of the time to FC. Because it lets me move around on the grid quickly and mine quickly and slow boat for getting bomb solutions. All right, I think we got the fittings covered so much. Do you guys have any questions regarding the fittings? Just a couple of comments. Um, one was that uh, yesterday we had an Arizona fleet who had only had an 800 millimeter plate. Which was that Maddie again? Uh, no, no, no. It was uh, um, Schiff or Schiff Schiff. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. That's a common mistake of where people plan a fitting and then they start out with the weapons. Even though the weapons are completely irrelevant for bombers per fleets most of the time. Because we don't need the DPS from two rail guns on an Arazu. It's not going to make a difference in a fleet that has the DPS of three dreadnoughts. And uh, the other comment was, um, okay. sometimes people bring a Falcon that has a sensor booster. Yeah, one sensor booster is fine, man. Uh, that's great for, for locking up uh, the fighters faster. So, William Grob is here. I am always using sensor booster and the Quave <laughs> Zero. Ah, uh, yeah, Quave Zero is always good. Uh, Wave Zero, a... if you guys don't know it, is a drug that enhances your lock speed a little bit and um, your shield, no, no, your speed, your velocity, 5%. Any side effects? No, it's just, it costs money. There are zero side effects. Fucking um, kill me. El Kala, at the moment, I think it's um, uh, Arazus. But it's fine, I think the distribution should be like uh, three falcons, two rapiers, one arazu. That should be somewhat the, you know, the, the rate of how many of each. Yeah, cool. No, I just I, I generally enjoy doing tackle anyway, so I might try and uh, concentrate on that. Yeah, they're pretty good. Like today, we're not having an arazu. So we've cut a mo covered most of the fitting stuff, and you guys are always free to bling those fittings out if you want to. On your own risk. Uh, or at your own risk and change the high slots change the mid slots around a little bit if you feel like one setting is better than the other setting all right we've got the fitting skirt how to gtfo is what we're going to do last in the different kind of ships um, oh wait uh one comment from lot of side uh, when I was flying uh, Falcon earlier, I came a couple of times into the situation where I was unable to to, to go under kill mails because uh, sometimes some ships cannot be uh, jammed, uh, jammed. Yeah. and uh, actually in these fits you have only two fucking small uh, uh, drones which uh, he uh, killed and I was just looking you guys coming on a uh, juicy kills and I was like oh shit yeah maybe you fit a whoring gun right but I mean yeah yeah it's not hard to have like a civil gun in the high slot as a falcon or a rail gun a small or like medium maybe even it depends if it fits yeah, or not. yeah I was thinking of that um, also, guys, make sure that, um, for example, these low slot thingies take uh, less CPU for the Falcon, but they do the same job as Tech 2, and they are cheaper. So look at the stats of the, the stuff you're equipping, and make sure you know why you're using it. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to use Tech 2, sometimes 
some other things don't make sense so make sure you're sort of checking your own fittings a little bit if you're modifying them I did not know that about the uh... Uh, one comment so I'm always using uh, gem drones so a few times they saved really saved my life so you ran out Germany of drones? gems to distribute and you used your gem drones on a target that wasn't gemmed Really? Right. <laughs> nice. So, radio pilots, where do you guys... What range do you guys think you should be towards the targets? Generally. Oh, 18 is an interesting range. Why 18? Point. That's a very small point range. Thirty thirty five says lettuce. I think thirty five is relatively safe. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the thing you want to keep in mind is don't get scrammed as a rapier, especially if you're a kaidi rapier. Don't get scrammed ever. So don't get too close towards them. Uh, don't get into bubbles. You can avoid it and um, make sure that your enemy doesn't is not able to run away. So always, like if the edge of your webbing range is um, 52 and the enemy is already at 40 and is burning away from you, then you That's should right. start burning in the same direction like a motherfucker or cutting off his direction if he is burning at an angle and not directly away from you and start overheating ahead of time before he runs out of your webbing range so you don't lose the target even though sometimes you're gonna think well but if he's webbed but not pointed he can warp off so fast that's true but if they're not aligned to anything they first have to turn around too and that gives you time again and gives the Arazu time again to catch up and point so sometimes if they're not pointed but webbed, it's okay. Especially if it's a huge grid. If there's a lot of enemies on grid, you don't care about one or two enemies getting away anyway because you kind of want to clear it out, right? So Nova, when when their Arazu and the Rapiers are in grid, don't wait for the Arazus to point, just start webbing? Mm, it's situational. Okay. Um, like sometimes I would really wait and still I see points coming up. They have the, the web ready, but if it's something that can burn away so fast that after it's started moving, like an Orphrus, like an Orphrus that it is already at 40 or something, and he starts to MWD, starts to pick up speed, you can't allow that to happen. Yeah, like that makes then sense. Then he's gone anyway. So just web him regardless of him being pointed or not. Okay. So basically, the target changes what, what the, they change the priority when it comes to webbing. Yeah. Um, also, the webs are uh, one of the key factor that torpedoes apply to small ships. So if it's something tanky like a T3 cruiser, and maybe a hundred mn T3 cruiser, that's like one of the worst cases. You need to web it down for the torpedoes to actually do damage. And if, if when you know that the target that there's already torpedoes in the air and that target is slow already, you can turn off your webs and put it on the secondary or the tertiary and try to catch more targets. Like right as you su see the first torpedoes landing, turn them off and and switch it to something else. Those webs don't have you know the si they have to cycle through anyway, and then you want to web something else as fast as possible. Uh, what is also a great tip that I saw in a Johnny Pew video um, There is a hot to switch towards the next target that you have locked and That hot key you find if you press escape everyone and then you go to shortcuts and In the shortcuts you go to the fourth one navigation and Then it's in the lower third select next target And for Falcon pilots, for all recon pilots, this one is really good because you can 
basically annual pilot your ship with double clicking around and at the same time you can switch next target and with, at the same time you can press an ECM module or a web or point uh, onto a target with your keyboard buttons. So you have everything hot keyed except for the piloting that you do with the with your ball click and your mouse. If you train that a little bit, and I would suggest you can do that with killing rats and stuff, having like choosing the next target and pre-webbing maybe, maybe if you have a web on your ratting ship, you can try that too. Because it takes some time until an enemy has been slowed down and then torpedoes actually do more damage. All right, so regarding the jamming, you guys notice that in the rainbow color jams, those fittings, that there is different jams for different races, right? Everyone knows that, I suppose. Oh, shit. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Say that again. So if you look at the falcon fits, if you look at the jams, they have different colors. And basically, if you really know the ships, the enemy ships, like what what is a swipple? Which race is that? If you don't Limitar. really know that, then you just lock them up, and as soon as you have them locked up in the background of the locked up targets, you see the nebula of the specific race, and that nebula um, has the same color as your gem you should put on that target. So it basically the targets color code themselves as soon as you have them locked up. So if you're confused, lock up as much shit as you think is necessary, then start jamming by those colors. Yes, if you're not color colorblind. If you're colorblind, maybe a Razor or Rapier would be better. Or multi-spec. <laughs> yeah, or, or you know all of the ship types, or most of the common ship types, and it actually doesn't take that long. For priorities of jams, um, we have sometimes used um, taggers for uh, for fighters, for example. Let's just say there's three carriers on grid, and there's going to be three sets of fighters, but you only have three falcons. Well, how are you going to make sure that not every falcon is going to jam all the same fighters? Then you maybe have a tagger, and he's going to tag them one, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. And one falcon is declared number one, the other falcon declared number two, the other falcon declared number three. Or a very common method is you broadcast a target that you have missed your jams on. You think it should be jammed. If you lock up a target and then you press the X button and click on that target, it's going to be broadcasted for the entire fleet. And then in addition, you say on comms, uh, the Slepnir, for example, or that fighter need, is not jammed. So other Falcons who have jams left over know, okay, let's put a jam there. Alright guys, the bubble is up, let's move around the bubble. And let's see what kind of ranges you're using. And let's check T-scan while we're doing the, the class. So. We actually know when stuff is coming in because we have a five second decloak timer. The bombers don't have that, but if we decloak for five seconds, we can't do jack shit. Do you guys have more questions regarding the jamming? Oh, yeah, what I wanted to say regarding jamming. Um, tech 1 stuff is easier to jam. Tech 2 stuff, harder. Bigger ships, harder to jam. Smaller ships, easier to jam. So there's a real scale. Like the smallest is a tech one slasher, and the hardest to jam is going to be a golem in, in sub capitals. The fighters are all, well, the tech two fighters are harder to jam. The super little fighter bombers are also harder to jam. So you know, if you have a racial jam, and you are making the decision, oh, do I put that racial jam on the small frigate, on the tech one frigate, or do I put it on the hack to hack, then you might want to use it on the hack because that T1 frigate you can maybe even jam with a not racial jam, with the wrong jam. 
And also there is difference in races. So Minmatar is the easiest to jam and Kaldari is the hardest to jam. I think second hardest to jam is Amar and second easiest to jam mm -hmm. is Galanti. So it goes Minmatar, Galanti, Amar and Kaldari. Just so you guys know what's easy and what's hard to jam. What's the most important skill? For a Falcon pilot, the and I mean in-game skill. Oh my no, God. I don't mean your players like the game skill. Yeah, ZD drone knows it. It's recon five. What you don't need as recons weapon skills, except <laughs> take two light drones. Don't really need weapon skills. Hey Nova. Yep. Hello. When. When jams occur, does it stop the fighter or drone from moving? No, they can still move around as, as much as they want. So, like as a bomber pilot, uh, I get yellow box a lot, but I trust my j uh, Falcons to jam. Um, if they've got jams on the um, fighters and I'm still yellow box, those things can be around me, but they can't do any damage unless jams are lost. I think that the yellow boxing is either a glitch, but I have experienced it too. Like there was fighters on me, and they wanted to shoot me, but they couldn't, and they were yellow boxing. Even though if something is jammed, it should not even be yellow boxing you anymore, because yellow boxing means they have you locked. But if well, something is jammed, it loses the lock, right? Well, well, what what's interesting is I'm not I'm not yellow boxed by the fighters. I'm yellow boxed by say a carrier. Oh, yeah, you can't turn that off that easy. I mean, you can jam the carrier too, but it's very hard to jam a carrier if he's in the, his, like, oh, what's it called, NSA, if he has that activated. It's almost impossible to jam. But if he's not in NSA, then it's more likely to jam him. Yeah, well, the yeah. key, I guess, for the Falcons is to jam the fighters, okay? Yes. If jam they the fighters. jam the Always jam they... the fighters. Yeah, if they jam the carrier, um, can the fighter still attack me? No, if they if the if if the carrier is jammed and he can't tell the fighters who to shoot, they should not be able to shoot you. Okay, so I think what what I'm seeing is when the Falcons jam the fighters, the carrier's not jammed, and that's why he can yellow box me, and but that's yeah. why his fighters can come toward me and not do anything. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and a good carrier pilot will, will pull his fighters back in and then really launch them a few seconds later. Yeah, that's what that rock pilot was doing the other night that we yep. couldn't kill. Yep, yep. Exactly. And so the rip, the rip yeah. your pi pilot would uh, also web the drones, so they would be very slow. Yeah, that would always be good. So, for example, let's just say optimal scenario. There is a carrier or something tackled. Um, the Falcons burn at their optimal jamming range, and the rapiers uh, are just ready to web those uh, fighters down. And the rapiers web them down, like spread the, the webs, one web each fighter. And then the fighters take a bit more time to get towards the Falcons. And that more time. Gets, makes the Falcon lock those fighters in time and jam them and then those fighters can't do jack shit. So Nova, why not just jam the carrier instead of the fighters? Uh, because they're too hard to jam if they are in NSA mode. Okay. So you can't get a reliable jam. We used to jam uh, carriers. So skills, let's go over the skills while we're waiting. And then the last one is going to be how to GTFO and whatever you guys want to know in between, we're going to cover that too. All right, long distance jamming. That one is useful for Falcons. This one is also for jamming strength. I would, I would just, you know, train those up to four all the ECM secondary skills and the recon skill to five and then you have a pretty good pretty pretty good Falcon pilot. Frequency modulation that's also for dams. Want to go heavy on dams on your Arazu? 
Well, looks like a sino less, just popped up. Propulsion jamming is like less capacitor need. Signal dispersion, on the other hand, is also needed for falcons. And everything else is not that important for us. Well, target painting, you kind of need target painting to be able to fit the target painter. What skills affect webbing? Webbing? Um, almost nothing. There is, I think, one skill that um, makes your webs use less, um, CP uh, less capacitor per cycle. That's it. So, the most skill intensive by far is the Falcon, if you want a good Falcon pilot. And the other ships, basically, you need Recon 5 and the standard and the standard skills. The uh, targeting skill set, they're uh, quite good to train up as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. The targeting should all be at 5. Like, the targeting speed, targeting range, targeting number of ships should pretty much be at 5. Targeting speed is the most important. You're always going to need that. You always want to lock up the targets really, really fast. What's the actual name for the targeting speed one? Signature um, analysis. There is there is one over category. It's called targeting and signature and analysis. Yeah, that's it. Also, what I would do in a fleet with a bunch of recons, I would when the FC asks who brings what recon. I would right. put it, okay. um, I'll put the other recons maybe on my watch list. And if I was a Falcon, for example, I would put the other Falcons on the watch list. If I was a Razu and Rapier, I would put those two on the watch list. And uh, try to get to know their voices so you can hear when somebody says, Oh, I got disappointed, then you go and point something else. You know that your, your, teammate has you know like target a pointed you go point target b obviously drive active and if you know that you know there's for example there you jump through a sino and there's five targets there and the fc calls a primary as soon as you see those 50 points from all the bombers go up you know that primary you don't need to point anymore <laughs> somebody else already <laughs> got it covered and unless it's super. Unless super, yeah. There's always the super rules that are a bit different. And then you just go for other stuff to point and maybe lock it up and put your whore gun on it so you can also whore on it. But main goal is usually... Also, with jams, that target is not even worth jamming anymore if it's a subcapital. Most of the time, because they're, it's just going to die so fast. So what about recons and bubbles? When does it start being an actual return on investment to carry bubbles? Well, for something like Rorkles, you always want to use medium bubbles, tech 1 mediums. So, well, it's always useful to have those people who can bring bubbles in fleet. And if you're recon, you should always use your cargo space for something useful to bring, even if it's not used. For Falcons, a lot of the times that's Sino Jammers, because Falcons are the only recons that have enough cargo space to fit those. Well, the, uh, the the tech one medium only requires anchoring three. So. Hey, Tyron, you're in the bubble. And decloaked. Maybe we should talk about positioning. <laughs> so generally, in a recon, don't be in a bubble. And most of the time, be aligned. And by be aligned, I mean right. aligned to an anomaly or to a celestial or to a gate or to a star if you panic it's better to just warp somewhere than to not warp most of the time they're not gonna warp after you and catch you while you land also guys don't forget you have a cloak button if you're not in range of uh, like uh, one of your fleet or something that could decloak you if even if you're not aligned and an enemy fleet is landing and your FC says warp 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 Press cloak first, then you can warp in peace because they can't lock you that fast. And if they're not burning to decloak you in that time, you're still warping off fine. All right, <laughs> we got skills covered. And now I guess we're going to go towards the stage of GTFO. What's the best tactic as a Falcon pilot to GTFO? Or what are the tactics? 
guys have clues? Stay aligned, cloak if you can, and if something scrams you, uh, try to jam it. Yeah. And what else? What else can you do? Uh, I like to bookmark an anom, and then um, it's just easier to easier to find on my um, people and places for you know aligning or warping, warping up. To. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, what else? Ah, uh, not praying. You can overheat your gems <laughs> when you're in this uh, like weird situation. You can overheat your entire mid slot rack, and you can burn off. Let's just say, FC called warp off, and you just landed there, and you got decloaked while you landed. You're completely fucked. The enemy group is all locking you up and pointing you and shooting you. Of course. You should try to jam out the enemy tackle, but there's so much there that you can't really make out on the overview and your adrenaline is kicking in and you try to align to something and you're gonna lose time because of that. And to save time, you can hit control, any control on your keyboard, and then click over your capacitor where, where it shows the pointing module and the scramming module scramming first and then the pointing because the scrams are more dangerous you can't mwd if you're scrammed a crow yeah a crow is a yeah, scram. we can't tackle them and then you click on those like scramming and pointing modules that are over your capacitor and that will automatically lock up all of the targets that have you scrammed or pointed um if you're in a rapier what's your gtfo mode how can you get away from situations Oh, also, what I needed to mention, because apparently somebody didn't know, after you press your cloak button, you can press your MWD button for a little bit. Like, for one cycle, your MWD is going to work. So if you press cloak, but the enemy saber just manages to get a bubble up, but you're aligned, just press F right after the cloak, press the MWD button, you're going to get out of the bubble, maybe. You guys see that stiletto? Yes. Ooh, Tuskers is playing games. Oh, that's dangerous. Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm getting sure landed on. Bubble. I was on the bubble. Buster, you should not be there. Get out of there. It's okay. I cloaked and hit my micro warp drive like we talked about. Good. Already learned something. All right. Any more questions? I have one comment about positioning, which is that earlier we were talking about being 30, 40 kilometers off. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing to pay attention to is if there is a Lynx ship on the field, you don't want to stray too far so that you miss the bonus. Yes, very true. Also in regards of positioning, sometimes it's good to use your, your bombers as a, basically a shield from you towards the enemies to basically hide behind the bombers sometimes it's better to protect the bombers to move in front of them between the enemy and the bombers and sometimes it's better to be like a little bit on the side or on the top so nobody can drop on top of you from a certain position but yeah. a lot of the times it's relatively good to be for the entirety of the fleet to bore towards one direction, especially if there can be bombs involved. And you kind of never want to be in the bomb blast radius. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you really know what you're doing, you can still burn away from the bombs if you're fast enough, but that's risky. You really have to know what you're doing. A few bombs, very little amount of bombs can kill you. Yeah, if we're in a, let's say we pin down a, a raw quad or something else big, and we've got small shit warping in on us at range, then I normally maneuver my rapier in between yeah. to kind of act as a kind of a point defense. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want to be with near those rapier webs, and then they have to go around you, which is going to be hard, and then yeah. basically protect your entire fleet. Yeah, we've caught some blingy stuff that way as well, like garments and whatnot. Yeah. Do you guys have any like experience or rule of thumb that you use for when not to recloak up or when to stay decloaked to tackle something fast or to like not have the decloaking delay am i safe and aligned if so maybe stay decloaked yeah yeah that's a good good rule of thumb yeah i mean if we've got a big response fleet 
that it looks like it's just jumping in, then I will try and burn off a bit. I might even cloak up if it's looking like we're going to have to get out anyway. Yep. But it, it's, a, it's a judgment call you have to make for yourself, really. Um, so often there's too much going on for the FC to actually order you to, to move off. As a recon pilot, you're going to be like a core member of the fleet. So you're basically always a allowed to talk critical information on who you have webbed or pointed or scrammed. I mean, pointed sometimes doesn't mean that much, but sometimes it does. And you're going to learn to know the difference. And especially the gems too. Like if it's in a critical situation, you take over comms. You tell, okay, this I lost jam on this one. Please jam this thing. I broadcast it. Now you guys know the hotkey for broadcasting? What is it? X. Yeah, and the hotkey for locking up targets that have, you know, like, e war on you? Control, right? Yeah, control. Oh, and then do we want to do that? And click over the stuff. Yeah, you want to do that? Yeah, I'm decloaking. If you want to uh, apply some E-War to me. Roger, I'm warping to Buster. Or I guess preferably not jams, because then I can't jam it out to demonstrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna... Yeah, only the only the rapiers put, put like, points and webs on him. Let's try if he can jam us out. I see I'm gonna be the first one getting jammed. Oh, wait, I did it wrong. Hang on. I'm going to unlock you and do that the correct way that we were talking about. Yep. So, like, if I hit hold control and click this web. You should lock me that'll up. That'll lock up him. Rather than trying to find it in the overview, <laughs> which is silly. You failed your jam. Mm -hmm. You can find it in the overview, too. I mean, if it's a small grid like this, it's not that hard, but... Especially if you're new, it's just easier to do it the way that I told you. Are you multi-spec? Oh, okay. Yeah, my jams is kind of weak. Got me. Okay. Yeah, also, do you have Recon 5? No, I got 10 days. Mm. Ah, so I'm far out of your optimal jamming range. You know what you can do? You can overheat your entire rack. You know how to do that? Yep. Okay. Just that little middle button there. Oh yeah, so what does it mean when uh, like this one's completely transparent, the little jam symbols, uh, but one of them's like transparent with like a, a grayish outline on it? That's the timer. Yeah, and also you're hovering maybe over some jams and then they're automatically not transparent, but it doesn't mean that the jam is actually working. Only if you don't hover over it and the jam has its full color and it's not like halfway transparent, then it's working, then it's on. Have you jammed anything successfully yet? Yeah, you've jammed. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, that's he jammed. I turned everything off so I don't burn out. <laughs> yeah, 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 I turned it off before you burn out. That so actually... Uh, my range on my jam is optimal within 32, range within 62. All right. Um, Rapius, what's your GTFO moves you can do? Let's say two scepters tackle you. What can you do? What the f uh, If you're in a rapier. And there's a lot of other stuff on grid as well, but they don't have tackle. Only the two scepters have tackle. You could try to burn away from whatever direction they're coming from and try to slow them both. Yeah, you can try to burn away. First thing you need to do is lock them up and put your webs on them so they they can't uh, follow up with you. And then you overheat your prop mod. And then maybe you let one guy come closer so you well he's well within your rapid light range. Overheat rapid lines, launch drones, and maybe kill him. Because you are going to be burning with him away from his friends. The friends are not going to be able to catch up, hopefully. And hopefully they don't have the range, the weapons range. Then you kill scepter number one. Maybe scepter number two can't catch up yet, or only has you pointed. 
just make sure that you don't let them get within 10 or 15 or 20 range. That's too close. If they get a scram on you, you're pretty fucked. Does anyone want to try to like get away from Nova when I point you and only put one web on you? I mean, you can't kill me. I'm a recon, but you can try to just burn away and, you know, anyone want to try in a rape here? Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah just decloak somewhere and I'm going to warp to you. So, who was the other guy who was putting up the bubble? All right, I got you, I got you webbed now. So, now burn away from me. Get out of my webbing range, man. <laughs> oh, good job. That was fast. That's basically how you should do it. So, basically, how to drop bookmarks is control plus B, right? And what I usually do when I work back on a grid, I look on how far AU and, you know, kilometers. And then if it's below 20,000 kilometers, any number below, I hit enter. At first I hit control B, name it ping, fight or whatever while I'm in warp. And then as soon as you hit enter, that's the moment where it counts, where it's going to create a ping. If you guys want to give me some critical, constructive feedback how I can make it better, the recon class, I'm going to work on it. Maybe have some written down material that goes along with the video that Buster is going to make. Woo! I probably have missed a lot of things. I think this was pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Alright. How many of you forgot his large light hull maintenance bot? I think Buster, that was you. Oh shit. No man, it's gone forever. Oh, is it? Should I pick it up? If you want it, I don't care enough about it. Uh, I don't either.